respiratory therapist is pretty broad. You have the opportunity to work directly with patients. There are also opportunities to work behind the scenes with sleep studies and things like that. You get to coach patients, you get to motivate patients, you get to help them feel better. You have the opportunity to learn about all aspects of the body. You can work in any medical realm. There are several different areas. Um, you, it's very diverse, actually. Um, you can work with neonatal infants, uh, premature infants, all the way up to elderly patients. Um, you can work in a pulmonary function lab. I know people that also work in uh, transport teams, e even air transport teams. You can, you can work in doctor's offices, uh, you can work in education, and of course you can work in hospitals. Nowadays the, the common uh, work a day for our respiratory therapists is a 12 hour day, three days a week. That's pretty standard for a respiratory therapist in a hospital setting. You'll come in anywhere from six in the morning and work to six at night, or night shift, six at night to six in the morning. There's always different shifts you can work. If you're in a place that is busy, a hospital that you know stays regular with patients, there is an opportunity multiple days a week to work extra hours, um, should you so choose to, opportunities to just pick up a few hours. If maybe you didn't wanna work a full 12 hour shift to help yourself or the patients. When you first get to the department, uh, you find out first of all what your area you're going to be assigned to. I'm currently working the day shift, so I need to speak to the therapist who had that area uh, during the night. So we sit down together and we go through each patient that we have and she gives me an update on each one of the patients that I'll be seeing during the day and I just start my day and I go through one patient at a time, see each one, uh, see what they need when I get into the room, um, if there are any additional requirements that they may need from me and of course the situation arrives that you don't expect so you have to handle those situations too that come up emergently. It all started back in 2003. I was pursuing my bachelor's in uh, marketing, trying to further a career in broadcasting. And in that time, uh, my dad, who had worked at a hospital, told me to come work with him at the hospital that he was at. And not long after, I kind of developed a love for patient care and decided a couple of years later to switch my major into healthcare. Um, just chose respiratory because you know it was more focused on a certain uh, care for the patient whereas um, nursing can be very broad it's a great it's a great opportunity you know there's many opportunities for growth you know not in just in healthcare but in respiratory you can take your skills and apply them in any situation in any uh, uh, field there are advanced degrees in the field of respiratory care you can become a registered respiratory therapist you can become a registered pulmonary function technologist where you would work in a pulmonary lab, advanced credentialing for neonatal. There is also a advanced credentialing for critical care. You can also possibly work in an education format, teaching uh, in a local program in respiratory therapy. Uh, doctor's offices use respiratory therapists. You can get advanced sleep technology uh, credentialing. You can work in a sleep lab. You can become a clinical manager. You can work your way up the clinical ladder. The most rewarding part is getting to know the same people. They remember you. Maybe they don't remember your name, but they remember, I saw you last time. And, and they know they liked you. Now again, they might not remember my name and that's okay, but they know they remembered me and it was a good experience and to know that I had a positive impact on them is the most rewarding.